I've seen everything. You think sometimes, geez, do these kids even have a stand a chance? Do they do they stand a chance in this environment without some type of intervention? gang fights, they see drive-bys, they see officers come and arrest daddy. I have a couple girls that are terrified of men. We have a little girl that was intentionally burned. They have bruises in places that wouldn't necessarily result from a fall. Some children have seen their fathers beat up their mothers. They expect the, to be hit. Without St. Mary's, I strongly believe that our children in the future will be the ones in jail or dead. Reaching children from the age group of three to five is the most important age because this is when their brains are developing. Um, this is where we can make the most impact. If you give a mouse a cookie, what do you think happens? Without a pat on the back, without somebody to give you a hug and to tell you that you are lovable and good, without those very simple but most important things, I'm not sure where any of us would really be. And you're going to come back tomorrow? Yeah. Did you have fun at St. Mary's Child's visit? We're all one family, and when children have unproductive lives, they turn out to be unproductive adults or in serious trouble. It's entirely possible when you look at these two and three year old kids that St. Mary's is working with. They're so cute and innocent, but it's entirely possible that someday without the intervention that St. Mary's is offering, that one day they may pick up a gun. I don't think that uh, our society can afford to write off young people such or like the children that come to St. Mary's. It would just be staggering for the average citizen if they were aware of, 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 that, of the number of kids that are at risk. I guess when it really becomes overwhelming is when you do drive past some of these houses and you think that it's not just one child there. In many cases, it's two, three, four, five, even more. Hey, you want to walk with Julia? She's got a hand. Our children come from all over the county, um, and 96% of them live in poverty. I think I was very unaware and I until I started working here of how deep the problem is. What kind of cookie are you going to make? All of these kids cognitively do not have limitations. It's social and emotional and things that have happened to them in their environment that limits them. These kids desperately need a warm, safe environment, a place where they can trust people in order to be able to be calm enough to learn the things that they need to learn at this age. When children first come here, they're pretty quiet and, you know, kind of down and out and feel like they're unwanted. They have a great need to understand consequences. Our main goal is to get their social skills up and for them to trust adults and not be afraid of adults and to get them to use their words and not their hands. You put them in the pie, right? These are the kids, though, if we do the right things for them, not only will they not go to jail or abuse drugs or be in special education, they can actually be people who fill jobs. Come on. We have our original location at 901 Dr. Martin Luther King Street, and now we have four classrooms at Fort Benjamin Harrison. It seems to help them here. Mm -hmm. Since he's been coming here, it's helped a lot. There's a preschool for the three to five year olds where we look at development. And secondly, there is a program called Family Services where we look at the family, their basic needs, and help them in terms of understanding child development and parenting. Before he started in the program, he was babbling, not using many words, not constructing sentences, and now he is talking much better, relating to other kids better. May? This is Julie Neese from St. Mary's. We have many parents who are very young, well, many you? parents who did not finish high school, uh, many parents who have no really? marketable skills, uh, many parents who have no parenting skills, and those are the reasons we're there. Don't have to eat them if you don't like them. 
We offer also a hot meal program every day for the children. Sometimes it might be the only meal that they get. Our philosophy is to take our services where the children and families are and where the need is. If it wasn't for St. Mary's, Keisha would not be at Holy Cross because of her severe behavior problems, the fighting and the scratching. I think Keisha was at St. Mary's for six months before I seen a tremendous change in her personality, in her behavior. And I, I would call the teacher and I said, what are you doing at St. Mary's so I can do it at home? Every dime we raise, every single dime, goes straight to the children. If it wasn't for our godfathers and for volunteers, there wouldn't be St. Mary's and we would not be making an impact on our, these children. We're not asking people just to give money to St. Mary's. What we're asking them to do is get involved in the mainstream of St. Mary's. The overwhelming satisfaction of being a part of the miracle of St. Mary's is is knowing that these young children who may not have a chance, might have a chance because of something you've done. She had been molested by a grandfather and an uncle on a regular basis. It took months before she trusted that that wouldn't happen. And she is now a very tall little five-year-old who is going to go to kindergarten next year. And we expect her to be entirely successful. The spirit and reason that so many people are so devoted to what St. Mary's does is embodied in a poem that circulates among our, our people. And it goes as follows. I saw a little girl in a thin dress standing on a street corner, cold and hungry. And I looked up and railed at God and said, how can you allow this to happen? Why don't you do something about it? And God was very silent until later that day, a voice said, I am doing something about it. I created you. to 